this video, I want to go over my journey from beginning to now on becoming a consistently profitable trader. It's been a long journey and there's been a ton of ups and downs. And I know everybody has their own journey along the way to becoming consistently profitable. Sometimes you can learn a thing or two or just realize that some of the struggles that you're going through are a normal part of the process to getting there. And I want to go over all of the details in between because it's been incredibly interesting. So check it out. It's been one heck of a process. And I think when you're on the other side of seeing somebody doing something that maybe you want to do, and I don't necessarily consider myself successful in the trading world. I think I can make a few bucks and I've become a consistently profitable trader. I still have a lot to go or at least goals I want to achieve. But I know that there's plenty of people who are just getting into the game and you know, they're looking for people who are a little bit farther along in the process. So just to, to go over my journey and, and all the things in between, because there's been a lot of stuff that's gone on. So just starting from the beginning to today. So from South Florida, it was where I lived for most of my life, middle school, high school, ended up going to Florida State University, had no idea what I wanted to do just ended up going and I spent, I spent four and a half years of basically just partying, really wasted those four and a half years and didn't do anything constructive. And I ended up grad, lucky enough, I ended up graduating. So it was fun. I didn't learn much. I didn't do much, but I graduated and I got my bachelor's in business marketing. And then right after that, I went into corporate America. Like a lot of people do. I kind of felt pressure from everyone around me to like, okay, this is just, this is just what you do. Went into corporate America Bounced around, had numerous jobs. I worked at ADP. I did a little bit of recruiting, worked at a company that did insurance lead generation, just trying a lot of things and never really found anything that I enjoyed. And as a matter of fact, I was miserable, completely miserable. I mean, just going into to work and really not wanting to be there and being very unhappy day in and day out and living kind of that, the normal life that I think a lot of people live in, which is you get caught in this routine from Monday through Friday that you hate so much that you end up kind of partying and going out and spending all the money that you, you know, you've made Monday through Friday to burn off some steam Friday night through Sunday and then back again on Monday. So it's just this vicious cycle. And I was caught in that. And, you know, along the way, my, uh, my family knew that I didn't enjoy it. And lucky enough, I have a super supportive family and, my dad, who's worked for himself for many, many years, is actually the one who brought up trading to me, which is crazy. I know there's a lot of people who are in a very different situation where their family maybe doesn't understand trading or they don't support it. And my dad actually brought it up to me. So towards the end, so just bouncing through a lot of jobs and then towards the end at this last one that I had, my dad mentioned something to me. He said, hey, why don't you just look into trading? See if it's something you're interested in because he knew that I've always wanted to attempt to do something on my own. I just didn't know what. I had no idea. And I lost sleep trying to figure out what it is I wanted to try. And he brought up trading and then that's, that sparked it. That sparked the interest. And I went on, I went on YouTube and I just started going down the rabbit hole of watching YouTube videos, not knowing what I was watching at all just watching videos on trading, ton of different strategies. And funny enough, I was actually paper trading while I was at work. Pulling out, I had a, I think it was like a trading view. I'm not sure what the platform was. And I was paper trading and I was paper trading spy and just like some other names and honestly had no idea what I was doing. And I would see a green number because it's, there's no real emotions attached to paper trading. And I'm like, okay, I think, I think this is something I could do. And eventually, this was going into, going into 2016. I kind of, that's where I started. And then six months in, I went, you know, I'm going to commit. I have to commit to doing something. I got to take a risk. I was lucky enough. I didn't have kids. I was single, no pets. I didn't own a home. It was like the perfect situation. Single dude, no real liabilities. Let's take a risk. I got to do it eventually. So I ended up taking a risk. And I moved out to Utah because I have family out here. So it was just an easy situation to, uh, to move out and kind of get away from everything. Because I know that when I brought up trading to friends and stuff, that most of them just didn't understand me. And I don't know why I had this feeling of if I go try this, I have to get away from that. I, I kind of have to get away from the doubt or I have to get away from, 
from any sort of judgment on why I'm doing this. And I just, I have to go into my own little world, my own little world. And I have to focus on this 24 seven and then make that my life. Cause I was kind of listening to podcasts and people were like, you have to be obsessed and this has to be, it's gotta be everything. So I got up and I left everything I knew and came to Utah and I didn't know anything. And I, I left on the backbone of paper trading at work, thinking that that was enough to, to make a few bucks. And just like everybody else, I had that situation where if I could just make like on average, if I could make like 150 to 200 bucks a day, that allows me to at least be self-sufficient doing this. And man, I had no idea that that was going to be the start of a insanely tough journey. So just to kind of jot down the, the time frames, these are all about the time, not exact, because it's been a little bit, so I forget the exact dates. And, uh, and then I moved, so I moved to Utah June of 16, and I actually was lucky enough to start with a PDT account. So starting off the, the best situation possible. And I, I think my first trade was like Bank of America. And I'm not even kidding. I was trading a thousand shares at a time and basically stopping out immediately if it didn't go my way. And if it went like five or 10 cents, I would just take the profit and really going nowhere, you know? And then the end of 16, kind of beginning of 16. So I'm about six months into my journey with a PDT account, like ready to really give this a real shot. I had a, there was a minor like family situation. It wasn't anything crazy, just a minor situation where I actually had to pull some of that money out. And then that changed everything because I no longer had a PDT account. So I was, I was really stuck and I had, and I had no understanding of being able to trade a cash account and trade options at the time. So I felt like I just, I was crippled. This thing that I really wanted to try just came to a, a stop. And then that's when I started digging online. So rather than quitting, I started digging and I came across TradeNet. Figured I got nothing to lose. It's either do this or don't do, you know, I cannot trade at all. So I ended up joining TradeNet and I ended up getting the intro package. And then with the intro package, you get access to the chat room and then you kind of start to learn their strategy. So I was, you know, learning the way that they trade. And then I did okay. I mean, I still was once again, very up and down, but I ended up grinding my way to a little bit of profits, very small. I ended up actually taking that and, and then upgrading to a student account. So more buying power. I wanted a little bit more buying power so I could possibly try to size up. So I upgraded to the student account. And you know, at this time I was, it's not like I was making a consistent paycheck from trading. I was going nowhere. It was, it was pretty much flat line. And so I was burning through, I had money saved. I was burning through savings. I was not consistently profitable. So I was not pulling money out. And it was just kind of that feeling of, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm drowning. I realized that I had, I had to do something else for money. I could not rely on just trading. And then that's when I, you know, going through all the stress of just not consistently making money, I started to sell on eBay. And that's when I said, I'm going to try something else. And I gave eBay a real shot and I started to build up eBay on the side. And so doing that trading with trade net, still not really going anywhere, right? Not, not consistently profitable by any means and just grinding away every single day and putting every second I had into this. I don't think people understand how much time I put into this. And the only people who understand how much time I put into it are the ones around me, which was, which was family. It was every second of every day trying to make this work seven days a week, not five days a week. I would watch the market from early morning, pre-market all the way through the close and then analyze charts till late at night. And it was like 15 hours a day, seven days a week. I, I lived in front of the screens. I mean, I'm in front of the screens a lot now, but I lived in front of the screens every second. It was, if I'm awake, I'm in front of the computers. That's it. And then the only time I leave the computers is when I go to bed. And then I get up on Saturday and Sunday and I do the same thing over again. And I just analyze charts every day. And I didn't even, I didn't really know what I was looking at. I just was, I was trying to use all the data that I could, that I could pull together to figure this game out. And it was YouTube and charts and recaps and YouTube and charts and screenshots of charts. And it was just, it was every second of every day. So that's kind of what was going on. And I still was not making money. So it was, it was, it was a pretty stressful situation because I was putting in a ridiculous amount of work. 
not getting paid for it. And I had doubts every single day, just like anybody else. The doubts were, were, were very real. Constantly having conversations with family as to whether or not I can do this and does this make sense? You know, I'm in my, I'm in my late twenties. Is this the right thing to be doing? Should I just be focusing on going back into corporate America and, you know, building a corporate career, even though that's the last thing on planet earth I ever want to do. So there was a lot of battles internally going on and I was not getting paid. So the gratification of, is this working? Wasn't there. So it was a very tough time. And then I realized that I did not want to be with, with TradeNet or just in a situation where I'm kind of trading somebody else's money or, you know, or just somebody else is in control of what I'm doing. So by about the end of 17, 2017, I ended up getting some money together and I got another PDT account. So I got over that hurdle of not having PDT and was able to, to, to get $30,000 together. I got a PDT account. Fantastic. I felt really good. Okay, made it through a tough time. And that this is also where I started trading options. So I started learning a little bit more about options and, um, you know, still trading stock, but also trading options, trying to figure it all out. And I, I still, even though I was trading, you know, and, have, and I met some trader friends along the way and was really trying to figure this thing out, I still wasn't making much progress. So it was just still up and down, up and down. And really, I think it was, it was risk management, it was just, it was emotions, and it was just really understanding my place within all this and exactly what works, ex like exactly to every little detail, what works for me personally. I still kind of latched on to some groups that I had followed and was trying to implement their strategy, so I had yet really become confident in myself and figure out you know, a strategy that I can focus on and eliminate all the noise. So I still had those issues of, of dabbling on YouTube and seeing other people talk about their strategies and then trying to implement them and just not staying consistent with what, with what works for me. And then I was, so I was so cooped up in, in Utah because I had no friends just around family staring at screens every second of every day that April of 2018, I decided to move back. Cause I was like, I want to, I want to live a little bit, you know, more of a normal life, have a social life, be able to get away from the screens every now and then. So I moved back to South Florida and that's where I continued to do eBay and continued to trade. And even then I still was not making much progress, a little bit better, but maybe making, you know, maybe a few hundred bucks a month, maybe a thousand dollars a month, but then next month give it all back and have a flat month and just, very up and down. And then when I was in South Florida, I realized that I just did not, I kind of closed the door on South Florida. And it was just that feeling of, I don't, I know that I don't really want to be here anymore, even though I'm back and I thought I did. It's just, it's not the long term thing. So I was there for like six, seven months and I came, I came back to Utah. So as you can see, my personal life had a lot going on. And I know I talk a lot about trading. Your personal life is very important. When your personal life is kind of in shambles or it's, it's, not, it's not organized and it's a little bit all over the place and your personal life is confused, your trading will be confused because mentally and emotionally you're confused and you're not dialed in. It's very important to be dialed into this and have everything outside of trading be in order. If it's not, that's a big reason why your trading is not in order. So I was moving around all over the place, no real balance, you know, sitting in front of the computers every day. Then I went back to South Florida and I started to get back into the old ways a little bit where I was going out on the weekends. So not necessarily, you know, waking up Monday, feeling a little tired, not 100% focused. So it was just, all that was a bit of a mess. So still making no progress, going nowhere. So I go, you know, I got, I got to go back. I got to get everything in order. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to give this a real shot, dial in, get away from the noise and see what I can do. So move back to Utah around October, continuing to trade, still doing eBay, still getting nowhere with trading. And it was just, once again, I think trying to carve out my emotions and become mentally tougher, how to manage the emotions better. I just, I wasn't there yet. And maybe some people can get there faster than others. And for me, it took a while. I think it took a while for me to manage emotions, really put together some discipline 
and continuously crunch the data to figure out exactly what works for me, which is now just scalping and then eliminate all the noise. Stop looking at other people's YouTube videos. Stop going on Twitter and really trying to figure out other people's strategies and applying those strategies. Become independent. Focus on what works for you. Stop worrying about other people that make it seem like they're making a ton of money because that's what I wanted to do. So I would try to do what they do and it would not work. And as I came back to Utah, I just still wasn't really getting anywhere. And I tell you the stress levels, the stress levels went through the roof. It was incredible. I was very stressed out, started to become pretty depressed and was not enjoying waking up every day. And that's when I realized, all right, I have to take a break. I have to take a break. So in December of 2018, I took a break and I focused 100% on eBay. I said, I'm going to focus aggressively on this and this is going to be the main focus, get away from trading for a bit and let's see what I can do here. And I actually built up eBay to a decent level. I was doing, you know, right around probably about $5,000 in gross sales a month with about a little bit more than half of that being profit. So anywhere from like 2,500 bucks, like three grand in profit and just got away from trading entirely. And that was one of the best things. It was so hard because I was so obsessed with wanting to make this work that taking a break felt like I was taking a step backwards, but I actually took a huge step forward because I was able to reset. During this time, I was also listening to podcasts, uh, you know, trying to read the occasional book just about like mental toughness, the mental side of this game. You got to get your mental on point in order for this to work. You have to have a tough psychology and you have to be able to be disciplined. So I was getting everything. So I got my life in order. And then I came back to the game when I felt like I was ready. So in June of 2019 is when I funded my interactive brokers account with three grand and it was a cash account. And remember, I had been trading options at about the end of 2017. So I was about a year and a half into trading options, feeling pretty comfortable with the cash account and went, okay, let's take everything I've learned, control the emotions, take the strategy that I like, which is just take the quick move. I'm a scalper and let's apply that every day. And when I first started with this 3K account, I didn't even care about how much money I made. It was just finish the day green. If I make $42, keep the 42 bucks. If I make 80, keep the 80. If I take a trade and I'm down like $20, just call it. And then I started to put together my process. And it's crazy because I knew all of this and I kind of did all of this prior, but I didn't put it together in one clean picture and then start to come up with some rules along the way and then some strategies along the way, the four that I talk about, you know, and then starting to put together some things, you know, max trades, max losses. If I take a trade quick off the open and it's green, just walk. You know, I used to trade all day or try to. And then that's when all those disasters would happen. I'd make some money and give it back and make some money and give it back. So realizing there's time of days where I need to walk away. And if I can trade the open pretty successfully, which is my strength, if I can take a scalp off the open and be green, statistically, just my stats, I'm better off walking away than I am continuing to press the button and being able to put all of this together and then start to work on my trader psychology and realizing when I get into trouble, why I get into trouble, the strategies that work don't deviate from that because that's when I start to make mistakes. I start to hold losers. My losers get big and just getting, becoming a well-rounded trader. And it took a really, really long time. And in 2019 was just focus on just being green. And I had small months, 500 bucks, thousand, 1200, 700, few hundred dollars. And I was green every single month. And then I really started to refine the process and then start to get really good and then start adding in, you know, reading the tape pretty aggressively and just everything that was coming together slowly, one piece at a time, like building a puzzle and not even really realizing I was building the puzzle, but now I can look back and realize I was and putting the pieces together and then it all start to make even more sense and then realize, okay, this is, this is all finally starting to come together, building up self-confidence, which in return builds up that trader psychology and all of those things. 
And then 2020 is really where it started to all come together. So January is where I had a decent month. And then every month after the fact has been pretty good because the account was getting bigger. So I was able to trade a little bit bigger, not be reckless, trade a little bit bigger, but also have some breathing room. Cause I don't care what anybody says, having a bigger account is it changes the game. You need money to make money. And if you have a decent size account, you have breathing room for the mistakes that you're going to make that I'm going to make. And I'm still, I still make them every now and then, but overall the large amount of losses are smaller than what they used to be every now. And then I do have a day where I just, I screw up. I mentally lose it a little bit and it becomes an outlier day, but having a bigger account allows me to not be so emotional about that and be confident enough to say, I know that I can get this back eventually. Let's just go about the process that has proven to work and then we'll see what happens. And the bounce backs are incredibly quick. I'll take a big hit and it takes like a day or two to get it back. So just putting it all together. And now my account, it's almost at 50 grand. And going into and June, there's a couple days left, but June will be an amazing month. It should be my best month, which is just which is just fantastic. So it's been it's been an insane journey and it's been pretty long. At least it's felt pretty long. I know that there's a lot of people online who make it seem like they're able to go from first day in the market to consistently profitable in like six months to a year. And there's people who kind of promote that. Maybe that's true. I don't think that's true at all. I think there's very few people on the planet who can even become consistently profitable. The percentages are already against you. And the ones who are consistently profitable, I feel like have been in the game for a very long time and have gone through some serious lumps themselves. And it takes, I think it takes, it takes years. So had I been able to, I think I, I could have sped up my, my process of getting there had I joined a group. So like SMB Capital, a, a very well-established prop firm in New York. Like I feel like day one, if I started with them, it probably would have taken me, you know, I could probably have shaved off about a year. There's still a level of, of emotions and, trader psychology that you have to go through that I just don't think it's, I think it takes time. I don't think that they're speeding that up. And that takes a couple years because you have to switch everything you know about kind of the real world when it comes to trading. You are pre-programmed, especially from school. You are pre-programmed to learn that losing is bad. If you fail a test, that is bad. You don't get another chance, right? And trading is the complete opposite of that you have to learn how to be a good loser. So I feel like we are wired the incorrect way when coming into this game. And then also all the other things like figuring out a strategy that works for you, not getting caught up in the noise, realizing that, you know, all the talking heads on TV and stuff are usually very incorrect. So learning to block that stuff out and then putting all the pieces together to come up with your, your own strategy, your own style. And ultimately you know, become the trader that you can be and get to consistent profitability. So that's my journey from beginning to right now. Cause it's been, it's been insane. There was a lot of ups and downs. It's been a heck of a roller coaster ride. And I tell you, I'm sure there's still going to be some bumps along the way. I don't think you ever really feel like you get there. You just get better at learning how to deal with the problems that once maybe crippled you before you get over them real quick. There's a, you know, if you, you take a big hit, you get it back a little bit faster confidence is higher and you don't have those same issues that you used to, which just comes from, you know, confidence in what you're doing, having rules and kind of building a trading business. And if, if your journey along the way has had a lot of, a lot of bumps and been a rocky road, realize that I think that's, that's a part of the process. That's totally normal. And I think a lot of people can be a little impatient when it comes to trading. They want it right now. And if I could give anybody a tip, like I've mentioned prior on my YouTube channel, I think three years, I think three years is the number you have to give yourself to then make a decision as to whether or not you can take it serious. Anything prior to that, and I think it's just too soon, especially when markets are constantly changing. You got to be able to be involved in different market conditions to see if this is something that you really can do. Feel free to share a little bit of your story with some of your journeys along the way because everyone's journey is different and it's interesting to hear about everybody else's story. 
I appreciate you watching the video. Thanks for listening to my journey. Please like and subscribe if you like the content, and I'll see you later.